Hi everyone, uh, I'm Richard from Sunshine Renewable Energy. Just wanted to see if you guys can make a note here, if you can hear me or not. Uh, and then we'll get this thing kicking off. Anybody hear me out there? My sound isn't working. Reese, sound isn't working. Okay, Kenya. All right, there we go. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're kind of got what we're doing tonight is we're kind of giving like a kind of like a high level uh, explanation of uh, you know heat pumps, uh, the connectivity between all of these things that apply to your your home energy system, uh, mechanical and otherwise, uh, electric uh, service and power needs for heat pumps. Uh, we can talk about financing. We can talk about all these things, general savings, uh, and and, uh, and and what I encourage everybody to do is while I'm kind of kind of going over everything, uh, if you can just kind of throw some of your questions there on the right hand side, and then I'll start dealing with them uh, as time goes on here. So uh, just adjust that camera there. So uh, heat pumps. Uh, there are several kinds of heat pumps. The, the number one that people 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 keep talking about that you hear about all the time is, is the, is the mini splits. So, uh, your, your indoor unit is, is what's going to supply your heating and your air conditioning. Uh, basically inside this unit, uh, you have a coil, uh, that heat pump coil, uh, is, is what delivers the heat or the cool. Uh, and then you also have your outdoor unit. They're all different types. We'll, we'll kind of go over those as well as we go, but it also has, it also has a coil on here as well. It's huge. Right. Um, uh, so and then in behind this uh, is a fan and that fan will actually blow through that coil and then out into the room and across the room. Uh, so that is your typical number one head that we sell. Um, another, you know, one that a lot of people uh, have taken more interest in recently uh, is the floor models, especially if you don't like, I know, you know it's, my no it's my number one objection, I'm sure. 90% of you out there say that you don't like the look of this thing. I know, I know, I get it. Uh, it's not beautiful, but it's effective and it works really good. Uh, and it's really going to be the future of heating uh, in uh, across the planet, really. Um, so, uh, and then this is, you know, kind of like your uh, very, very good, not quite as good as this, but really, really good still. Um, sacrifice a little bit of efficiency for, for the looks, uh, but nothing, nothing significant to say the least. While we're on it, we'll talk about the filters. All heat pumps have a filter, right? Uh, that air is going to be sucking through the top of the machine, right? And then out, pushed through the machine and out. Uh, these filters, uh, they get dirty over time, right? So it's very simple to take them in and out. Uh, they just literally slide in like so, right? Take them out, you rinse them off in the sink. Uh, you dry them, put them back in. Every 60, 30, 60, 90 days, depending on the house, if you have pets, if you have a dusty, you know, kind of a dustier house, uh, you may have to do it the more often. Uh, but definitely you want to check that every quarter uh, because you do not want that thing getting clogged. It's going to sacrifice your efficiency. Uh, it's not going to clean the air as well because uh, it's not going to move as much air as it did before uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah. And then all heat pumps have a compressor. Again, we're going to look at a couple of different types of compressor, uh, but all heat pumps have a compressor. This is for a much bigger unit. Uh, the mini splits, I'll just spin this around here so you can see the mini splits, uh, like the single zones are, are kind of a lot like this, right? Just quite small. Uh, this is for actually a ducted unit. So this is for an entire house from one machine. Um, so you can have a few different ways of doing this. All right. Uh, our number one way is single zone. All right, so one compressor, or one head, one compressor, so the smaller compressor. If you're doing multiple in the house, I always recommend that you separate them. You do single zone, single zone, single zone, wherever possible. However, there are multi-zones. So it's big, again, you're getting back to something like this, a uh, much bigger compressor, and you can have multiple units coming off of that. Uh, one big sacrifice with the multi-zones is efficiency uh, and actually reliability. Um, so, uh, you know, one thing that I say to people, and the price difference really isn't that much, is that if you're if you're minimized for space for where you can put one of these, 
then we may be going this route. If you have all the space around the house and all kinds of space all over, uh, I always recommend you this. You're diversifying your invest investment. Your efficiency is going to be like 30% more. Um, they break down less, guaranteed. Guaranteed, just know that because uh, you know we've got 10,000 heat pumps out there and uh, the, the multi-zones are the ones that break down the most or have the most issues, uh, user or um, physical air, uh, mechanical air. Um, so yeah, so single zone, one head, one compressor, multi-zone, one compressor, multiple heads. All right. So uh, another thing that we do a lot is, um, uh, so when you have a two-story house, uh, and you have all multiple bedrooms upstairs. Uh, it usually is pretty difficult to get the whole floor. If you put one in a bedroom, let's say the master, uh, it's not very good at getting out of the room through the hall in through the next door and so on and so forth. So this is what we call like an attic ducting system. I mean, it's kind of our term. They're actually a low static air handler. Uh, so basically you have like a supply, right? That comes out, it goes out through your leads right? Your leads are right here, right? So that's going to be in each room, depending three, four, five, six bedrooms, right? Um, and then it all sucks back to a return uh, in the center of the hallway. This is actually a really big one. They're about half the size of that. Um, uh, and that goes out in the hallway. And essentially what happens is, is that air goes in through here, goes through the machine, which is the same thing as what's over there. Oh, you can't even see me. <laughs> so it goes in through here right? It goes through the machine. It goes out through the ducts and we insulate that duct um, because it is in the attic. Um, and then out through the vents and then back through the return there, right? So it's a closed system. It's not actually changing air from inside to outside. Um, so yeah, so those are kinds of like the mini split side of things. You know, if you're doing like a split entry, uh, raised bungalow, bungalow, you know, this is usually your best solution. Uh, when you get into the two-story houses, uh, main floor basement, um, uh, definitely here. But when you get into the bedrooms, I, I can't say enough about this. Super quiet, um, gets multiple rooms, right? Your cost per room for being heated and cooled goes down by like almost $1,000. Uh, and even more so the, the bigger you go. Um, so, and then you're not having these spider webs of multi-zone heat pumps all over the place, right? Because uh, you put the compressor here and a bedroom's way over there. Um, yeah, anyways. So kind of like quick scoop on uh, the mini split side of things. Uh, the other thing that we do is uh, the ducted heat pumps, right? So I'm actually gonna come over here, sorry. So ducted heat pumps. So essentially, right, these are kind of like the old compressors. They're huge now. They're looking more like the mini splits, right, the, the tall, thinner ones. Uh, and then you have your air handler, right? So uh, that would then go through into a ductwork spider web that goes throughout the house. Uh, you'd have your supplies, your returns that suck the air again back to the machine. Uh, to go back and condition throughout the house. Uh, this isn't as prominent because there's way more, I mean, we, uh, most of the houses in Nova Scotia are, are electric baseboard or hot water baseboard, forced air furnaces. We don't retrofit these very often, uh, unless you're doing like a major renovation because it's so destructive to the house. Uh, that's why the mini splits really come into play for those retro, retrofit situations, right? Um, another thing on here, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, power in heat pumps, right? So if you heat with oil currently, there's like a 90, 95% chance that you have 100 amps. It might not be glass fuses, it might be a fuse box, right? But you can always tell from the, the main breaker that's coming in, it's on every, panel and it'll say either 100, 125 or 200, right? So the thing with heat pumps and all heat pumps of any kind, 
is they cannot be your primary heat source, right? So it can't be your primary. It can do all of the heating necessary throughout the winter, right? But uh, they're, a, they're a mechanical machine. A heat pump is like a brain surgeon compared to a furnace, right? So if it breaks down, right, and it will, all heat pumps, all furnaces, all mechanical machines, they all break down. If it breaks down, you need a backup heat because a heat pump is different uh, than a furnace. The furnace guy can come out, he carries all the, he or she carries all the parts on the van, uh, then comes into the house, fixes it up and running, you go, boom, you're off, right? It's so quick and easy. Heat pump, totally different. Different machines, different brands, different sizes, all different parts, right? All different parts. You would have to have a transport trailer in order to go around uh, and fix machines on the spot. So what happens with a heat pump is we come out and we diagnose the machine, right? Then we order the part. Then we got to pick up the part. Then we got to book you back in. You know, usually you're talking a few days. So you always have to have a backup, a primary, right? We call it a backup, but it's it's really classified as a primary heat. And that is either going to be electric baseboard, oil hot water baseboard, electric hot water baseboard, propane, uh, not, or, or oil forced air. Uh, propane or any of that, that kind, not a wood stove, not a propane fireplace, not a pellet stove, right? They're classified in the same realm as the heat pump, you know, a secondary, even though it can do it all, right? Insurance is going to give you grief if something goes wrong. I'm just going to grab a sip of water here. So back to power. On 100 amps, if you're keeping oil and you don't have a hot tub or a heated swimming pool, chances are you can fit all the heat pumps you need in your house right now. No upgrade necessary if you're keeping oil. If you're looking to get rid of oil and that's 100 amps, boom, you're going to 200 amps. You got to go to 200 amps because we were replacing that oil primary heat with some sort of electric heat, electric boiler, electric baseboards. Uh, electric furnace, if we're ripping an oil furnace out, so we actually put like in the heat pump is an electric furnace. Uh, I'll kind of kind of go back to that again in a minute. Um, so yeah, so 200 amps. Uh, same with if you have 100 amps, because this is coming up a lot more now. If you have 100 amps and you have your heat pumps, you're not getting an electric car, right? Or you're getting an electric car and it takes 24 hours to charge it because uh, it's the lowest uh, lowest size wire you can fit on the panel, potentially. Um, so yeah, so 200 amp service upgrade, they're gonna be really big in the future, especially if you have oil heat. Uh, 125 amps, you can sometimes sneak it through on 125 amps, depends on the size of the house, depends on where you wanna go. Because uh, again, you're still probably gonna struggle when you wanna go to that electric car, which is going to come uh, down the road most likely anyways. Um, so yeah, uh, the other thing that we do just kind of brief, uh, generator panels, right? Gener links, right? Uh, automatic standby generator. Um, and again, we're coming to the electric cars and stuff like that. So we do electric car charging too. Um, and then kind of back over to here again quickly, uh, cause I forgot about ETS, ETS, electric thermal storage. So, um, uh, we do a lot of that. Uh, especially when you are like uh, in the basement because you really don't need air conditioning uh, in the basement. Uh, the real benefit to electric thermal storage is this is basically a bank of bricks that go inside here. You have two heating elements that go through. Uh, and the idea of them is that they take a charge like a battery uh, at night of heat. And then they give off that heat throughout the day. Uh, they're really, really effective uh, just from the heating side, uh, but uh, when you pair them up with mini splits, um, uh, they can be super effective uh, because uh, the way the time of day meter works is it's Monday to Friday from 11 p.m. until 7 a.m. Friday from 11 p.m. until Monday morning at 7 a.m., so your entire weekend. Uh, all your national and provincial holidays, they charge you half price electricity for the whole house, right? For the whole house, everything that goes on in that house, cooking cleaning, dishwashing, dryer, washer, all those things. If you work those in those hours, you're going to pay half 
the going rate essentially. So this is to charge at night. So versus an electric baseboard, it's effectively 50% of the cost to run because it's only going to take a charge at night. The kicker is, is with the heat pump, and don't forget about electric cars because when do you charge your car at night? Um, so uh, the big thing with uh, the heat pump is a heat pump is three or 400% efficient, all right? So that means for every one unit of electricity that you put into it, you're going to get a value of three or four of heat out of it. Uh, and that's most of the time. On extreme cold days, you might get down to two to one or something like that. Uh, but those are few and far between. Uh, we're pretty, we're, we're pretty uh, mid-climate. We're not super cold. And we're not super hot, although air conditioning costs next to nothing. Um, it's the heating side that really costs in anything. Uh, that's where the bulk of our energy goes in Canada is because uh, we have to heat. Uh, so anyways, yeah. So three or four to one percent efficient, which means... On the time of day meter, this is getting you six or eight to one because it's also running on half price electricity. So it runs miles ahead uh, of anything else during those off peak hours. Uh, and then even on the on peak, it's still really killing it uh, because it's so efficient. So we find that this combo is real good. Uh, and I think it's going to play out really good for other things down the road solar. Uh, uh, electric car charging. Uh, if we ever get into any kind of residential battery storage uh, down the road, uh, those kinds of things um, uh, are what we're kind of potentially going to see anyways. So back to the kind of like the compressors and the mini splits. I mean, these are just the easiest to kind of demonstrate quickly. Uh, so essentially a heat pump, what it does is it is actually taking the heat or the cool out from inside to taking the heat from inside the house to outside the house when it's air conditioning uh and then they're taking the heat from outside the house out yeah even when it's cold outside minus 20 minus you know it's there's still actually heat in the air these things get better all the time uh, so it's actually taking the heat that's in the air outside cold and pushing that heat uh, back inside it's using a compressor the coil as we already talked about uh, and then the refrigerant is the fuel that goes between the two units. So the refrigerant gets hot or cold, goes to the one place or the other, uh, and then it delivers your heating or your air, your air conditioning. The heating, awesome. I mean, it's really, you know, it's most people find it's the best heat that they'll ever get because it's super consistent. It's not kind of like furnace on, furnace off, furnace on, furnace off. It's kind of like on, 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 on. It just kind of brings the temperature up just a little bit and kind of keeps on plugging away. So you get a much more even and consistent temperature. I think that a lot of people now are kind of leaning more towards these because of the air conditioning side of things, which is awesome, but really the benefit is the heat. The bonus is the air conditioning. All right. Uh, so uh, air conditioning in the summertime, same thing. It's taking that heat from inside the house. It's dumping it outside. That coil inside is getting cold. The air is blowing through the coil. Uh, while that coil is cooler than the actual air inside the room, condensation will occur. So uh, they will condense and take the moisture out of the air. Uh, and then you'll get a dehumidification effect from them. Uh, it's really quite nice. Uh, I mean, air conditioning, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even live without it. I just, you know, it, it would just drive me crazy. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm saying here again from the indoor unit or from the outdoor unit you have a line set that runs to your indoor unit uh, it's copper tubing right supply and return uh, refrigerant lines uh, you also have your communication wire because the indoor unit or the outdoor unit actually powers the indoor unit uh, and then your drain line because when it is air conditioning it's actually creating water and you have to get that outside or into a drain somewhere uh, both are um just as good as one another uh so yeah quickly about brands um our fujitsu is our number one seller i mean it's you know we sell um 95 fujitsu i would say uh, and that's between ducted and mini splits um uh, the big thing with fujitsu is it comes with a 12 sorry i'm moving this camera here it comes with a 12-year parts 10-year labor warranty 
So really, at the end of the day, if we sell you a Fujitsu, uh, we're really not going to have a problem for a very long time. Uh, the warranty is basically all inclusive apart from years two to 10, there's a $149 call out fee, right? Uh, so there's really no worry about uh, longevity, operating costs, all of those kinds of things in this product. It is a bit more expensive, um, but uh, when you're comparing it to other brands, you really, really do have to compare the warranty because these things are not cheap to fix, all right? 70% of our service calls are not our customers. They are all not Fujitsu. Uh, and the problem is, is that when it's out of warranty, you know, you can, you can look at some serious dollars to get your machine up and running. Typically, uh, it ends up being like a junky machine, right? Like something like this, uh, that we're just literally ripping out and it's like under five years old, right? And it's absolutely tragic that these things happen. Fujitsu, Mitsubishi, Daikin, right? LG, if you want us to take a little step down, which we also sell. Um, but these are the top three brands. Fujitsu, Mitsubishi, Daikin. We sell Fujitsu. We do not sell Mitsubishi. We do not sell Daikin. So if you don't want to go with us, try and stick to Fujitsu, Mitsubishi, Daikin. Uh, I, just as, as any other heat pump contractor who's really dedicated to their customers, want the success of heat pumps to be successful. Uh, and if you're getting a thousand dollar bill to get your machine that you paid under five years ago, uh, you're paying a thousand dollars to get your 25 or 85 or $5,500 machine because, you know, anyways, you just gotta be super careful with heat pumps. Uh, they're serious machines. Uh, they need really delicate attention. People who know what they're doing. Um, and, uh, and then backup from the manufacturer, right? Uh, that's uh, that's the really big thing there. So, uh, and then the last couple of things, and then now I'm going to go over to questions. There's a little bit of hot water. So we do a lot of hot water as well, um, especially when we're doing conversions from oil to electric. If you heat your hot water with oil, we got to put something in. Uh, so we typically stick to two tanks, uh, three tanks actually. Now one's not here. Uh, the Marathon tank, which looks like the little spaceship over here, uh, that is a, a great tank for if you are on a well water, if you run through a lot of tanks, this is your tank. Uh, it, comes with a lot, it's, it comes with a lifetime warranty on the tank. Uh, so uh, if you have like hard water or a lot of uh, acidity in your water and you're rotting out tanks, a great tank. Another one that you'll see coming down the road uh, is somewhat here now, um, uh, is the heat pump hot water tank. So essentially, uh, we're using the same technology. It's a heat pump uh, that heats the hot water of the hot water tank. It's super efficient. Uh, this is a three and a half to one ratio over a traditional uh, electric hot water heater. Uh, they too are really trying to push. They come with a 12 year warranty as well. Um, as far as the as far as the backup goes there, uh, we're selling a lot more of those over time here. Just gonna grab another sip of water. Here we go. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go, okay, yeah, yeah. So, sizing of heat pumps, really, I mean, it kind of depends on the brand, too. So, the Fujitsu that we sell, um, they do, uh, in the single zones, a 9, a 12, and the 15 in their top model. Um, but... Uh, the nine does 12,000 BTUs of heat. Um, and the 12 does 16,000 BTUs of heat. And the 15 does 18,000 BTUs of heat, which is kind of like, that's the highest in the industry for those. Um, so, um, you know, uh, for Fujitsu, we're looking at a nine of about 800 square feet up to. Um, uh, you really, again, if, if you're looking at putting one in a bedroom, I mean, it's really not, a great idea because you can't get one small enough for starters as well. Um, so if you're putting a nine in a bedroom, it's just way too big. You need at least five, four or 500 square feet really to, to get a good nine off the, off the ground. Uh, and then, and then 800 to a thousand square feet. Uh, we're looking at typically a 12, 
Uh, and then a thousand to twelve hundred, fourteen maybe, depending on the house. Uh, you go with a fifteen. Uh, once you get over that size, uh, it's not getting a bigger heat pump. It's getting another heat pump, right? And now we're talking a huge floor. 1,400 square feet is a massive floor. Uh, if you got like 2,000 square feet, two heat pumps in an open space, right? Um, so, you know, if it's if it's all choppy, uh, now you're talking more heat pumps anyways, right? Because these things are really for the open space, right? They kind of blow out, they cover the space. Um, and then once you start adding doors, uh, once you get beyond that door, they really kind of die off, right? Um, uh, it, okay, so condensate issues with the attic system. I mean, geez, you know, it, it can happen, right? And I've had this argument with lots of people. We use hard drawn pipe, so it's one inch. You can kind of see it, it's right on my finger there, right? And we graded out the house. Um, can it leak? Sure. Yeah, absolutely it can. Uh, do they leak often? No, not rarely. Uh, very rarely. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the thing with this is that if you're having one of these installed, we need really to come out and, you know, check it, you know, at least every 18 months just to make sure that there's no plugs in the, in the drain or anything like that. But the argument for me is, uh, really, this is one drain, right? It is literally above your, above your head. If something goes wrong with that, you're going to know pretty quick, right? So well, we can figure that out. These buggers, right? <laughs> These are the ones that suck if they drain in your side, your wall, and we don't know until it's gone all the way down to the basement and done some serious damage uh, because that is more likely uh, than that, right? Uh, these, we get calls out all the time, all the time. The drain disconnects inside the wall. Uh, it was installed improperly. Uh, that was probably number one, uh, and all the, and all the other things. But the problem is, is that if it stays in behind that wall, it can get down there without really actually showing itself here, right? And then it does something down there. And once it does something down there, it goes like this, right? Uh, so now you now you're going across the space too. Whew, I've seen some nasty ones, right? Um, yeah. That's a heat pump hot water tank in our showroom. Yes, annual maintenance package. We do. We have an annual maintenance package. We just launched it this year. Um, so uh, traditionally, uh, a heat pump cleaning where we clean the head, they give you kind of a, basically you do the filters, right? Um, but every, every year best practice, uh, or at least every two, uh, you want us to come in and actually clean this thing, right? So you can do the surface stuff, right? Uh, you clean those filters regularly, keep your machine in tip-top shape. We come in and we actually take the full casing off of the head, slide a bib up underneath of it, and we actually wash the inside of that machine, right? Because when it's condensing in the summertime, and it's still dirt's going to get through those filters, they're not perfect. Uh, now you have a wet coil uh, with dirt equals nasty, right? Especially nasty over time. It's not nasty if you do it on a regular basis. And like I say, every year, best practice. Every two, you can get away with, especially if you really keep on top of your filters. Uh, or if you don't use it for air conditioning at all, because that's really the time where it happens is air conditioning. Um, but nowadays, I mean, pretty much everybody uses these for air conditioning. So um, LG, we do LG, right? LG is a good machine. Uh, the only thing with LG is that they only do parts for their warranty. Uh, the, again, I come back to the Fujitsu because they do the labor, right? So literally, uh, you know, they, they, like you're not, no surprises, right? No surprises, right? I, I like no surprises and customers like no surprises. And the customers that get the surprises don't like the surprises they get because sometimes they can be pretty painful. Um, Heat pumps for pools. Yes, we do, we do heat pumps for pools. Uh, yeah, it's actually, it's kind of getting to that season where we would be getting a lot of those orders. Um, 24 by 30 garage. So a garage you want to be careful with, right? Um, a garage, uh, the problem is, is that, you know, like we're, we're kind of used to the way heat works from 
a furnace or a wood stove or something like that, which, you know, tr can create, create tremendous amounts of BTUs, right? Like, you know, your wood stove would create, you know, 120,000 BTUs or your furnace would be like 85,000 BTUs. So these can create a tremendous amount of heat all at once. A heat pump, not so, right? A heat pump can only produce to its maximum. A 15 can do 18. A 12 can do 16. This is in a Fujitsu. A nine can do 12, right? It can't do more than that, right? That's it. So if you're in a garage and you're kind of opening the garage doors and stuff like that, the heat goes woof, out the door. And, you know, on a really cold day, it can take a long time for that heat to build up again, which is, you know, kind of like when we put these two things in, things in people's houses, we kind of say, hey, you know, really you want to kind of set it and forget it, right? There are some people who really want serious control and there are Wi-Fi capabilities with it, but you really don't want to go too far uh, because again, let's say a, like a great example is, you know, somebody who goes to work and they have a forced air furnace right now, they turn it down to 12 when they go to work as it happens, right? They turn it down to 12 when, and then, you know, half an hour before they come back to work, boom, they want it up to 20. Well, it only takes five minutes to get it back up to 20 because it's all coming through a hot water base board is a little bit slower, uh, but really those can get, those can achieve great heat. Uh, this cannot, right? This, you come home and you say, I want it on 20, right? It can't make it, right? It takes too long. It could take hours depending on how cold. If it's minus 20 outside, it could take a couple of hours for it to build that heat back up again. And then you're jamming your primary on, right? So you're back up your primary uh, and you're wasting energy using that, right? If it's electric, especially. Oil, I mean, that's another thing that we should talk about is savings wise, because everybody wants to know about savings. So heat pumps, save money. Electric baseboard, all the time, every time, right? If it's a properly installed heat pump and it's a good heat pump, you cannot lose versus electric uh, baseboard or any kind of electric heat, really. Uh, wood stove, I mean, if you're paying the going rate of around 300 bucks a cord, this might actually cost you a little bit less per year to operate given the same space, right? And when I say given the same space, uh, that means that if you were heating X amount of space before and you're heating X amount of space after, uh, then you're great. If you are heating X amount before uh, and then now you're heating even more because this thing can actually typically reach further, um, now um, uh, you're actually heating more space. So you know, your cost kind of, your savings kind of narrow a little bit more because you're doing more space uh, with more with less essentially. Uh, but oil, oil is a funny thing. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It's been down for a while now, mind you. But I remember four or five years ago, I walk in and I'd say, if you have a thousand square feet, this is going to save you a thousand bucks, right? Uh, it's right now, it's around break even, right? I can't really do a whole lot as far as annual savings. Uh, but what I can do almost every single time is make your house more comfortable, give you pennies on, pennies on the day to the day air conditioning in the summertime. Uh, and it's just a good investment for your house nowadays. I mean, it, it literally is going to go this way, right? Like at some point, pretty much everybody's going to have a heat pump. Oil's going to kind of come away. Uh, even natural gas is not really, there's no competitive advantage with natural gas around here anymore. Uh, I still think uh, in a lot of cases from what I've seen is you can still save money on this uh, the, uh, versus natural gas. Propane is pretty cheap right now. Uh, but again, like these things are really expensive to install. Uh, and their longevity is not really going to be there. It's, you know, this is the prep zone. Uh, if you want to be in the 21st century, you, you kind of got to, at, at some point, start thinking about moving over to this stuff, right? Um, I don't see any more. Uh, so, yeah, the efficiency of the... Uh, of the ducted heat pumps through the attic. <clears throat> I say, really, there's no perfect solution, right? If you put heads in the rooms, right? And you got two or three or four rooms, your, your, your install costs are gonna go up. And again, they're oversized. So they're not really, it's not about savings. It's more about air conditioning upstairs, right? Same with this really. Uh, this is more, you know, it does the heat, right? But if you do it properly and you've got this downstairs and it's a good one, 
this one will practically heat upstairs, right? So the heating side, we're not really worried too much about. This This becomes more of an air conditioning issue in my opinion. And same with heads and rooms, right? So a head in a room, right? One oversized, but what oversized head in a room does is it comes on, right? And, and it shuts off because it's done. And it comes on and it shuts off, right? It's over, it's oversized, so it's oversatisfying the room too quickly. So it's short cycling, right? So it never really gets a chance to really do what you're asking it to do, especially for air conditioning. Um, so what you're doing is, is that you're not, you're making the air cold in the room, right? But you're not getting a chance to get the moisture out of the room because it's not running long enough to really do the dehumidification side. This we properly size. So this is running all the time. This is conditioning your air. This is a cheaper option to three or four heads, right? Um, so, you know, this is more, uh, in my opinion, more about the air conditioning side than the efficiency side. Although we do do everything that we can to, I mean, and I think really overall, when you're talking multi-zone, uh, the actual technical efficiency is almost identical between them uh, in most in most instances. Um, so uh, we insulate the duct. The whole inside of that, that, that steel casing there is all insulated from the inside. Uh, it doesn't actually exit into the attic. It's going through the system, right? So it's coming through quick, right? So you're not you're not getting all kinds of heat loss uh, through that. But hey, you know you know you do what you do. Uh, I just you know hundred in my opinion, almost hundred percent of the time, this is the way to go. Uh, not only for now today, uh, but down the road when you go to sell your house, uh, it makes your house more attractive. Uh, you got air conditioning in every room, uh, and people are going to get more and more wise to all of this stuff. Uh, as time goes on, uh, well, for one, I mean, I, I do this like 25 times a year. So I'm probably doing this to like, you know, three or 400 people, uh, at least, uh, maybe more than that, maybe closer to a thousand people a year. Um, so anyways, the, it, it is kind of like the way things are going as far as, but the thing is with this and, 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 and you know, you can have a bad install of this. Oh man, you can have a real bad install of this. This is, this is actually a whole separate trade uh, up in here, right? You have sheet metal uh, that you have to deal with, right? This is not the same trade as refrigeration or the electrical. I mean, you're, now you're talking, you got electrical, refrigeration, right? Sheet metal, uh, all in one, uh, all in one job. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot and not, not, not many are, are geared up to do it. Um, so auto, oh my God. <laughs> auto, I am not a fan of uh, in heat pumps for the most part. Now, some of this stuff coming out may be uh, better uh, than before, uh, but in the mini splits, never, right? I'm the one that ends up having to go out to somebody when they're, when they're saying it's not, you know, it's working, but it's not really working. Uh, and the first thing I do when I go into the house, I, you know, where's your remote? Okay, auto throw it up to high fan speed, right? Um, and you want and you want the louvers, right? I'm just gonna see if I can pull these down. So the louvers, when it's open and blowing are like this, right? And they can come down, they can go up, right? They can go side to side, right? In almost every circumstance that I've ever seen, you want it pointed as high as that, the highest point of this louver will allow, and then have it set on that bang, right? And the inside louvers are gonna go to the most open space. So if you're in less split entry and it's open and the bedrooms are right down the hall, like kind of like bang down there, that's where you're hammering it, right down there, right? If you're in a house, like a two-story house, sometimes it's kind of going here, right? And then there's like a double door kind of just off to the left or the right or whatever it is, you got an obstacle directly in front. You want to avoid that obstacle. You want to throw it as far away from the machine as you can get it. Because the further you would get away from the machine, the longer it's going to run. The longer it's going to run, the more it's going to produce. The more it produces, the further it gets. The longer it runs, the more efficient it is. Right? Like I say, these things should be basically running almost 100% of the time. 
The only time you'll see kind of a, a weird operational thing in this uh, is in the winter time when it goes into a defrost cycle. Um, because just like in air conditioning, right, you're taking the moisture out of the air and it's draining outside. However, that may be through condensate pump or a direct out drain or a hard drawn drain like in the attic system here, right? So uh, it's always going out or into a drain again, right? Outside in the winter time, the same thing happens. So if there's moisture in the air and that heat pump is trying to heat your in, heat your house, right? What you're going to get is you're going to get like a frost buildup on the outside unit, right? And you'll see it if you whenever you have one or if you have one already, you'll see that these things frost up on the outside. And then they'll go into what they call a defrost cycle, which basically shuts this head down for the most part, right? Points the louvers down to the floor and reheats the coil on the outside to melt any frost that's built up on the machine. These things sense that they know what's going on. Um, so they do it all automatically. You don't have to do anything, but you might walk out one day and if it's near your driveway, you hear a bunch of water dripping down and you go, oh, oh that's a defrost cycle, right? So all heat pumps do it, all heat pumps, right? Financing. So we have two different, well, three different kinds of financing, two that I really deal with most of the time. Uh, Nova Scotia Power, which is like the easiest finance. It's, you know, what's your name? What's your address? Your finance, right? Uh, and it's 7% up to 10 years, so you can go three to 10 years. The one that I've been pushing people a lot to in the last year is Credit Union Atlantic. Uh, they have a green financing program, although they do want a little bit more information uh, off of you, like more personal, like, you know, it's a, more like a proper loan, um, but they do 4.49%. I mean, most of our customers are homeowners. Uh, you know, it's it definitely, you know, if, if you can get through on the credit and everything like that, it's definitely the way to go. I mean, and the bigger the job, the bigger the difference, right? You know, like I've seen differences of, you know, a couple grand over a 10 year period on like, on like a two heat pump job, maybe with a service upgrade. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it can be pretty significant, uh, the difference in the interest rate, interest rate um, for those. Sound, sound of heat pumps, all right? Chances are, if your neighbor is pissed off about your heat pump, it's because there's something wrong with your heat pump, right? Uh, they really are quiet. The ducted ones, uh, like the like the like 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 the York here, it's kind of like the more traditional kind of thing here. These ones can get noisy the older they get, um, but really, again, you know, not really neighbor disturbers unless you're like right packed in like sardines. Um, but these here, man, like the, uh, you know, most of the time you'd be like, like I've got, if you ever, if anybody ever wants to come by as well, we have all this stuff operational in the showroom. Sorry, I'm just taking a sip of water there. Um, uh, we have all this stuff in the showroom and it's operational. So if you really truly want to see what it sounds like, you can, but they're super quiet. They're super quiet. Quick thing again about this ducted thing. Cause I mean, this one, this one, I really can't stress enough again. So again, this, this head is in your room, it's oversized, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off, right? Um, you hear that. I mean, they're quiet in the living room, in the dining room, in the basement, right? But in the bedroom, any noise is too much noise in the bedroom, right? And this is more, you know, in the, in the living room, in the dining room, in the kitchen, it becomes white noise because it's running all the time, right? So it just, you know, it just kind of fades away into the background when it's on and off and on and off and on and off. <laughs> you're going to hear it. I promise you. Now it's not as noisy as like a window shaker that you put in the window currently or a portable or whatever. Um, but still, you know, it, it, I have one above my head. I live in a two story house. It was before I did these. I want one of these <laughs> and I will, that will be my next upstairs heat pump. It's in the attic. It's between you and tons of insulation, hopefully. Uh, and then gyprock. rock. So there is, there's, there's no noise. There's no noise. You can't even hear. You don't even know what's going. You just know it's awesome, right? Especially in the summertime. Rebates. So rebates uh, through Efficiency Nova Scotia, uh, depending on what you're going for mini splits, it's 
$200 per ton. So every 12,000 BTUs is $200. Um, uh, and then if you're going to 12s and it's four, uh, the ducted systems like the Yorks there, um, they are $400 per ton. Uh, and another thing that I didn't touch on, uh, I'm still in the middle of kind of setting this up for future seminars, but uh, the ducted system, uh, there are ways that you can throw that into an existing forced air furnace as well. Uh, it's kind of a dying breed uh, because now the oil furnaces are typically older uh, and most people are kind of looking to get rid of them. But yes, we can install these in a furnace um, uh, and you don't have to do the 100 amps service upgrade to 200 amps. Um, yeah, so that that's another option as well. Um, so can landlord, yeah, landlords can apply. Uh, if you're low income, they got some great programs coming out for that. If you're, if you're renting out to low income. Uh, yeah, so if you're hearing a hum from 30, hum on a wine all day from 30 feet away, they need a service call. We do service, we'll service anything. Um, but they definitely need a service call because something's wrong. Uh, you know, if you want to point it out to them, I mean, you're, you're potentially going to save them a machine because if, if it's the, if it's, if it's, if it's a humming noise, uh, then that means something's going wrong with your compressor. And once your compressor goes, that's it. She's gone, right? It's over. I mean, we do fix some compressors, but usually we only fix compressors while they're under warranty, right? So, so uh, distance and restrictions, sorry, I missed that one. Uh, distance and restrictions, uh, not really residentially, typically. Now, saying that, the, the cost of these are gonna be going up this year for sure, I'd imagine, uh, because the cost of copper is just skyrocketing, right? And these things have a lot of copper in them. Uh, the, the lines that run back and forth and the wires that run back and forth, they all have copper in them. Um, so, uh, you know, you don't want to go too far more for cost purposes than anything else because, you know, anything over a certain footage, we're going to charge you uh, extra for a long for a longer run. And, you know, a foot of this, right, it's something you, people don't realize necessarily, a foot of that, uh, if you're buying the good materials, um, you know, you're looking at raw costs like $17 a foot, right, between the plastic shell on the outside the two lines of copper on the inside, plus the copper communication wire, plus the drain line, uh, plus the slim duct, which is actually the, the plastic on the outside is actually the most expensive part per foot. And then you have all these couplings and things like that that hold it all together and the inlets that go in through the walls. I mean, those are 10, those are 10 or $12 a piece. Uh, so, you know, you can run into some serious expense in installation um, by running long lines. Uh, but really, residentially, there's no, there's hardly any limitation. So yeah, so installation on the heat pump. There's there's kind of two ways that we do the outdoor compressor. Um, you know, our preferred method is uh, concrete because uh, what we do is we kind of anchor a bracket right into the concrete, and then you're not going to have any any tipping over time. Um, but the other one that we do also is the stands, right? So you got a four foot stand that sits on there. Um, the bracket's kind of like an L bracket and then the machine sits on top like this. Uh, so yeah, those are, in order to get it on concrete, we need like six inches of concrete. Uh, and then you gotta have, um, have it above as well. Any other questions out there? Uh, I don't know if there's a, if I, or if I missed anybody because it's kind of hard to watch. <laughs> so it doesn't, so is it, is it still producing heat uh, with the wood stove or is it actually taking that wood stove heat and pushing it? Um, so, I mean, like with wood stoves, I mean, I, you know, I know a lot of people really still love burning the wood and stuff like that. I actually think that the heat pump really complements it. Um, but if you're burning the wood stove, I wouldn't have it in heat. 
right? While you're burning the wood stove, um, I would just have it on high fan speed. Take that heat and throw it across because it's really going to help distribute that heat. These things can move. I mean, this one here on high fan speed, like 550 cubic feet per minute. I mean, it's exchange, uh, uh, you know, a 500 square foot room fully in a minute, every minute, every, every minute. It's, it's, it's nuts. I mean, that's some serious blowback that you can get from that. Um, so is that, so that the east is that the ETS that you're the cost of ETS? Yeah. So the cost of ETS unit for the time of day meter. Um, so they they range. It depends on uh, if you already have an electric baseboard in place of where this is going, because we can use that existing wire, or if we're running a new wire from the panel to the unit. I mean that changes the costs entirely. But you know. Twelve to eighteen hundred dollars from small to big if we don't have to do any wiring. Uh, but the other thing that we do as well as part of that time of day meter, which I actually forgot to mention, is uh, we also put a timer on your electric hot water tank, right? And then that actually cuts your electric hot water costs in half because the timer tells that to come on at night uh, and then run all weekend long on half price electricity. So it's kind of like a I, I firmly believe that, you know, a heat pump is like kind of like a heating and air conditioning solution. Uh, so you need it where you're going to heat or air condition, right? Um, you don't need to air condition the basement. ETS gets you on the time of day meter. ETS is a whole home energy solution. It attacks the heat pump. It attacks the hot water. It attacks the laundry. It attacks uh, the dishwasher. Uh, the cooking, right? Everything, right? Everything uh, it applies to. So uh, there is a combination. Um, so uh, uh, I think that it depends, like uh, a good heat pump with a good cubic feet and a, and a good, you know, you, you can also usually tell uh, if, if, if the indoor head is big like this, uh, and it's a small BTU, it's probably a good unit, right? The smaller they go, although LG really does have a star product there. Uh, typically, the smaller they go, the less the less fan they can produce, right? Like this thing has a gigantic fan in there. That's why the head is so big. Um, and then it can, and it also makes the coil inside bigger. But you're 50 feet. I mean, it can throw up to 50 feet if you're on high fan speed. Now, you're not, you're not at 50 feet, you're not going to actually feel the wind. Right, but you're gonna it's, it'll it'll dry your eyes out in ten seconds if you're staring at it, right? Um, and or it'll freeze your face off if you're in it in the front of it in the summertime. So the the heat pump hot water uh, tank, um, typically if we're replacing an electric tank, you're somewhere around three grand. Uh, I think there is a four or five hundred dollar efficiency Nova Scotia rebate on that as well. Um, uh, you know, uh, but often we have to put a condensate pump on it because it's also going to do uh, like a heat pump dehumidification. Uh, this is more. I think this you're going to see more of this in new builds down the road because a lot of times we're incorporating the ducts, so the duct goes out. It's not sucking air. Uh, it's not pushing cold air out. Uh, retrofit, eh? It's good, right? And it works. You need at least four people in order for this to really work out for you. Um, uh, this one is really good if you're on the time of day meter because the, the insulation it is, is is like that. It's R20 insulation, um, and it'll hold it. I mean, we lost power at our house um, before I got the generator panel last year during Dorian uh, for five days, and in that tank, the water was still hot five days. Like nobody had a shower. But you can still wash dishes with warm water and everything like that, which is pretty awesome. I, I was impressed by that. Would ETS be accepted with primary heat? Yes, it technically is. However, right, uh, the ones that we use, these Ecombis, right, uh, they're they're pretty small, right. If you you might have seen. So, you know, probably most people have seen the Stephis one. I mean, Jesus, those things were, I mean, those things are as big as like, as like that generator right there, right? And it was huge and it could do the whole floor with a big fan that flew out over it. These are kind of more like room to room, right? So this one, 
we'll do a size that will do like up to 400 square feet of, of well insulated space, um, uh, 250 square feet of older space that's not as well insulated. Uh, and then once you get over those, then you're kind of adding more units, right? But if you've got multiple floors, now you're, now you're kind of getting them everywhere because they're more room by room or space by space. Um, whereas, you know, the mini split on the main floor where you want air conditioning, uh, and it generally like it can, like I say, if you have open space, you know, it cover that'll do 1100 square feet if there's no walls. Right. But the problem is every house, there are walls. Uh, so yeah. Any other questions out there before we wrap this thing up? All right, well, thank you very much for attending. We're gonna have a link. We're gonna give away a heat pump, although there are three more sessions that we're gonna do. I'm doing next Tuesday, the following Wednesday, the following Thursday. After that, we'll have a draw for a free heat pump. Um, uh, we, we really appreciate your time. Uh, tell all your friends, I mean, this is, you know, you, you really don't get an opportunity to kind of go through, boom, everything that you can get in the house. Um, and, uh, and we wanna get the message out there because, you know, the heat pump, uh the heat pump world the the solar world the electric car world all those things are coming uh and and we are very big supporters and want to be a big part of it uh so uh, if you have anybody who's looking for anything let them know all right thanks very much and have a great night